Hello and welcome to this session. This is Professor Farhat in which we would look at a CPA simulation that deals with deferred income taxes, income tax expense, and income taxes payable. This topic is covered on the CPA exam as well as an intermediate accounting and give students a lot of problems on the exam. So I will try to simplify to explain this concept for you in details. But before I start, I would like to remind you to connect with me on LinkedIn if you haven't done so. YouTube is where you would need to subscribe. I have 1,900 plus accounting, auditing, tax, finance, as well as Excel tutorials. If you like my lectures, please click on the like button. If they benefit you, it means my lectures might benefit other people. Please share the wealth. On my website, farhatlectures.com, I help accounting students as well as CPA candidate pass the CPA exam. I do not replace your Becker, your Roger, Wiley, or Glant. I can do that. I wish I can do that. I can do that. All what I can do is I can help explain the material a little bit more in details and slower than the other courses. Not I am better than the other courses. I do things differently. CPA courses, they don't expect to teach you because they assume you learn it in college and they're reviewing it with you. I teach you the material. So please check out my website, farhatlectures.com, if you are studying for your CPA exam or if you are taking accounting courses and if you'd like to supplement your accounting education. So let's take a look at this problem. I'm going to break it down for you piece by piece and go over this. Now, this problem, although it's going to be work as a simulation, based on this problem, I can ask maybe 15 to 20 different multiple choice questions. So understanding what you are being asked is important, okay? Don't assume this is what they are asking for. Just look at the information very closely. Read the problem very closely. So let's take a look at this problem. In a simulation, you basically have to understand the full picture. And that's why I like the simulation. I think the simulations are easier than the multiple choice. Because if you really understand what is the simulation asking you, you can get the whole simulation correct. It means sometimes it's one simulation for the whole test slip, and you can get it right. Okay, so let's take a look at this. Adam Consulting sometimes performs services for which, it, for which it receives payment at the conclusion of the engagement up to six months after services commence. That's fine. Adam recognizes service revenue for financial reporting purposes when the services are performed. Pretty straightforward. For GAP, once the services are performed, we recognize the revenue. For tax purposes, revenue is, re revenue is reported when the fees are collected. For tax purposes, when do we recognize revenue? When the fees are collected. So we have GAP and we have the IRS. And here we are dealing with revenue. When is revenue recognized here? Revenue when performed. When we perform the service, we recognize the revenue. When do we recognize the revenue under the IRS? When we receive the cash. Okay, so those are the timing. Service revenue, collection, and pre-tax accounting income from 2020 to 2023 are as follows. So they're, they're giving us four consecutive years. And the reason I made it four years is for you to see the, the additional years, to see what happened the following year, then the following year, then the following year. But I'm going to be dealing only with one deferred tax. I don't want to make it so complicated here. I just want to make sure you understand the concept. Starting with 2020, we have service revenue collection and pre-tax accounting income. We have that for 2020, 2021, 2022, 2023. Here's, here's the service revenue. And when we say the service revenue, it means how much revenue did we uh, recognize, earn as far as gap. So this is basically, if you want to think of it, this is the gap revenue. Collection is how much cash you receive. Think of it as tax. This is the tax. This is the taxable income in a sense. The, what we collected is tax. And here they're giving us the pre-tax accounting income for the whole company. Assume no differences between accounting income and taxable income other than the temporary differences described above. And simply put, the temporary difference described above deals with account receivable because when we're dealing with revenue on the balance sheet is account receivable. So we're looking at one difference and that's account receivable. Also assume the tax rate is 25%. I'm just going to assume that, <laughs> that we're going to be changing the tax rate to 25% for the all the years. Prepare the journal entries to record income tax expense, income taxes payable under the third component for the years 20, 21, 22, and 23. It's a pretty comprehensive exercise and hopefully we can take care of it. Now, when you are faced with a problem like this, First, you have to understand how you want to approach it. I want to approach this problem from the account receivable perspective because that's the most 
reasonable, not the most reasonable, the most logical way. This is your temporary difference, which is account receivable. I should have hid this. I'm going to hide this. Okay. I should have, but I did not. So the, the temporary difference is account receivable. So here's what happened. In 2020, we sold 732000 worth of merchandise. We debit account receivable, 732, we credit sales. I don't care about sales. I'm not showing you sales. So this is the 732. I'm showing you the journal entries. Then we collected 692,000. We debit cash, credit account receivable. This is for 2020. 2020 ended, the balance of 2020, the account receivable balance is 40,000, 40, not $40, $40,000. Are we all okay with this? I'm gonna keep going. I'm gonna show you the full picture. You don't have to go through it. I'm just going to go through it to show you how you would approach this problem. If it's on the CPA exam, they might give you some, maybe they'll give you one big simulation like this. They may not give you four years. They may give you two or three years, but I'm going to go through four years. 2021 revenue is 822. We debit account receivable, credit sales. We received $850,000 in cash. We debit cash, credit account receivable. Now the account receivable balance is 12,000. Notice the, the, the balance, which is in blue, went from 40,000 to 12,000. 2022, we sold 782,000 debit account receivable credit sales. We collected 774,000 debit cash credit account receivable. The new balance is 20,000. Our balance went up from 12 to 20,000. 2023, we sold 788,000 debit account receivable credit sales. We received 792,000 debit cash credit account receivable. And our balance and account receivable went from 20 to 16, went down. That's fine. So this is the overall picture. So notice the temporary difference is account receivable started at 40, went down, went up, then went down. Well, why? It all depends on how much we are selling and how much we are collecting money. Now, when you are faced with an account receivable, when you have a balance of account receivable, you need to understand, you need to understand, comprehend, com comprehend, comprehend, you need to understand what does that mean from a deferred income tax perspective, okay? Let's look here, now ignore everything here, and let's look at the 40,000, because we're starting with 2020, so this is 2020. When you have an account receivable of $40,000, what does that mean? Well, it's the result of those two numbers. You sold $732,000 and you received $692,000 in cash. In other words, you are still waiting to be paid $40,000 and that's reflective in your account receivable. What does that mean? It means in the future, in future years, year 21, year 22, year 23, you are expected to receive cash of $40,000. Well, think about it. If in the future you're going to be receiving cash that you're going to consider revenue for tax purposes, what does that mean? It means in the future you're going to have a deferred tax liability. And that's why I, I, didn't want, I, I should have hit this. Now we are dealing with a deferred tax liability problem. Okay, so so our account receivable is the account that's that's the difference and it's not, it's a temporary difference. And as a result of the 40,000, we are starting with a deferred tax liability. Okay, hopefully this makes sense. Okay, so immediately what I can do is, I know I'm gonna have a balance here year one, but we're, we're gonna find out how much is the balance. Now we're gonna start to prepare the journal entry for the year 2020. How do we start the journal entry? Listen to me and listen to me carefully. The first thing you compute is your tax bill. The first thing you compute is your tax bill. How much are you going to send money to the IRS? How much you're going to send money? How do you know how much you're sending money? Here's how, how, would, you, how you would know. Your pre-tax accounting income, 258000 This is your gap. This is your gap income because it says accounting income. 258. However, including in this 258, $40,000 that you did not collect in cash. Why? Because I have... I, I sold more than what I received. That means I have 40,000 in cash I did not receive. So simply put, you are going to start with 258,000, 258,000, that's your gap income. Then you, for tax purposes, you're going to take out of it 40,000 cash that you did not receive. Why? Because you still have it in receivable. Therefore, as far as the IRS, you have 218, 218,000 in taxable 
IRS income. Well, you're going to pay, we're going to say we're going to pay 25%. Well, if we take 218 times 25%, the answer is 54,500. And that's your tax bill. Once you know that's your tax bill, you credit income taxes payable 54,500. I'm starting with the journal entry 54,500. You're done with this. So this is no joke. This is step one. This is the first thing you determine is your tax bill. How? What's the check that you will need to send to the IRS? The next component is your deferred tax. Do you have a deferred tax? I sure do. We already determined it's a deferred tax liability. What does that mean? It means in the future, I have $40,000, $40,000, then I'm going to be responsible for paying taxes on, and we said the rate is 25%, and that's easy. That's equal to 10000 Simply put, I'm going to have a deferred tax liability of $10,000. Therefore, I credit deferred tax liability $10,000. And I'm pretty much done. I don't have anything else to worry about. Sometimes you might have a deferred tax asset to worry about. But in this problem, I'm giving you one temporary difference. And I will expect on the exam to give you one temporary difference. If you have more than one, I do have examples on my website for that. But I expect that you will receive one temporary difference, at least in the simulation. Now, we have two credits. What's the debit? The debit is a plug. So the income tax expense is a plug. And what's that plug? Well, we have to pay 54,500 this year and we have to pay 10,000 in the future our total income tax expense is 64,500 okay so the income tax expense is basically a plug part of it is your current tax and part of it is your deferred tax so of this 64,500 this is your current and this is your deferred so your income tax expense is composed of two components a current component the one that you pay now and the one that you're going to pay in the future. Okay, sometimes it's going to be a uh, what you're going to pay now plus the savings. You, you might have a deferred taxed asset or your liability could go down. But here you have both something to pay now and something to expect to pay into the future. Okay, so this is what we did for year one. We're basically done with year one. So I'm going to erase year one to start with year two. So we're done with year one. Now let's start with year two. So basically, my deferred tax liability balance is 10000 because I don't have any prior balance. Year two, well, I already did the account receivable. Um, I debited account receivable, then credit account receivable. My, my account receivable went down. It means that year, I collected more cash than what I sold on account. And clearly, it shows here, that, notice... You recorded 822 in service revenue, but you collected 850,000 in cash. You collected more cash than your revenue. What do we do first? We we compute our tax bill. How do we compute our tax bill? We are giving pre-tax accounting income of 332,000. This is gap income. But guess what? This year we received more cash. This year we received more cash than what we uh, than what we sold. We received more cash than we sold. Look, you can clearly see it here, the difference between what I received in cash and what I sold. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to be adding the cash, and the difference is $28,000. i am going to be adding the cash to my taxable income because I received cash. Now I'm going to start to pay taxes on that. Now, 332 plus 28 will give us taxable income of 360 for the IRS. Again, I'm going to multiply this by... 25% and as a result I'm responsible for $90,000 that's the, this is the check that I'm going to have to write I'm going to credit income taxes payable $90,000 now what happened to my deferred tax liability well my account receivable went down it means the the deferred taxes that I set up earlier now it's coming due and I'm I am I am I am getting the cash and I'm paying the taxes therefore I'm going to have to start to reduce my deferred tax liability because my account receivable went down from the prior year. Now what is my balance what is my balance in my account receivable? My balance is only 12,000. How do I know it's 12,000? Look. It went from um, 40 to 12. It went down 28,000. It means of the 40,000 of the third tax liability component, I already realized 28,000. What does that mean? It means I'm going to take 28,000 times 0.25, and that's going to give me $7,000.
The $7,000 is a reduction in my deferred tax liability. So now I debit deferred tax liability. And now my balance is 3000 in my deferred tax liability. Now I debited deferred tax liability 7000 Now, what is the plug? Now, what is the income tax expense? I'm going to have to pay in check 90000 Of this 90000 of this 90000 uh, I have a reduction of 7000 in my deferred tax liability. Therefore, my income tax expense is only 83 thousand it's only 83,000 so my income tax expense notice the expense is 83 but I am writing a check for 90,000 why am I doing so because simply put for this year I'm responsible for 83,000 and I paid so this is of this 90,000 80 you can think of 83 is current paying my current taxes and I had a reduction I have to pay seven thousand dollar for past taxes for past yes for past for past liability for past liability which is the third tax liability okay so this is what i did this year and this is the entry and now my balance and the third tax liability is three thousand well that's good let's move to year three again let's erase everything and start with year three we have the balances again starting with account receivable we already analyzed account receivable 782 Received cash of seven hundred and seventy-four thousand. The balance is twenty thousand. What happened between year twenty-one and year twenty-two? I um, sold more than I received cash. How did I know this? Look, my my account receivable went up by eight thousand. By went up by eight thousand. So overall, I sold more than what I received in cash. And notice, you can see it here. I sold seven hundred eighty-two thousand. I received seven seventy-four. Well, you can clearly see it. Let's compute my tax bill. What's my tax bill? It seems my gap income is 300000 And since I received less cash, how did, I know, how did I know I received less cash? Well, my account receivable went up. How much did it go up by? By 8000 Therefore, it means I did not receive those 8000 in cash. Therefore, my I'm going to have to pay a tax bill on 308 I'm sorry, not 8,000, 292,000, 292,000, 292,000. Let me get my calculator here just to make sure I'm doing this right. 292,000 times 0.25. Okay, I'm responsible for sending the IRS 73,000. That's the first entry you do. You credit income taxes payable 73,000 now what happened to my deferred tax liability I hope you know my deferred tax liability it's gonna go up my deferred tax liability will go up by how much would it go up it will go up by the amount of the difference in the receivable times 25 percent times 25 percent well what does that mean it means let's see I went from 12 so it's 8,000, so I'm going to take 8,000, 8,000 times 25. So let me see, 8,000, 8,000 times 0.25, and that's 2,000. It means my deferred tax liability, it's again, it's 8,000. Let me, let me write it down here. So my deferred tax liability, it's going to be 8,000 times 0.25 it's going to go up by 2000 up means i'm going to credit i'm going to credit this 2000 now my balance is 5000 so i'm going to credit the third tax liability 2000 what is my income tax expense 75000 the addition of those two it means i'm recording 75000 of expenses of which i'm going to pay now 73000 this is the current and this is the deferred and 2000 i'm gonna have to pay in the future when i receive my cash okay now if i was in your shoes you should stop now uh, uh, pause the recording and see if you can get year four which is year 22 23 and if you can get it it means you are on the right track okay let's look at year four year four uh the difference uh well let's see 788 in sales on account and 792 is what i received in cash so notice my 
my receive ball went down by 4,000. But before we do that, let's compute how much do I send the bill to the IRS. I, I, uh, my gap is my gap, my gap taxable income is 272,000, but I received $4,000 more in cash because my account receivable went down. Now it becomes taxable times plus 4,000. So my IRS taxable income is 276,000 times 0.25. And 276 times 0.25, it's going to give me 69,000. I'm going to have to write a check for 69,000. Therefore, I credit income taxes payable, 69,000. What's going to happen to my deferred tax liability? It's going to go down. Why? Because my account receivable went down. I'm receiving the money. I'm paying the cash. 4,000 went down by 4,000 times 0.25 equal to $1,000. So my deferred tax liability will go down by 1,000. And what's my income tax expense? It's the difference here. It's 69 minus 1 is 68,000. It means I am on my income on my income statement gap. I am showing 68,000 of expense of which I'm paying 69,000. Why? Well, because I have to pay 68,000 this year. So of this 69,000, 68 for this year and 1,000 I'm paying for revenue I earned in the past, but I'm receiving the cash for now. This is my, this is why my deferred tax liability went down. Therefore, let me do this. So I'm going to debit deferred tax liability and my final balance is 4,000. In other words, I, I'm still responsible for $4,000, you know, in the future for to pay taxes uh, for past, you know, for past revenue that I expect to receive in the future. So this is basically how you would approach an income tax expense problem. Now, if this is challenging or if you need more explanation, this is what I'm going to invite you to go to farhatlectures.com. On farhatlectures.com, you will find additional lectures, resources, multiple choice, true, false exercises that's going to help you understand and learn this concept so when you go to your cpa exam and when they start to throw those acronyms on you you're like okay now this those acronyms make sense great so don't forget to visit my website subscribe your investment in your cpa is a lifetime investment it's 20 to 30 if not 40 years we are living longer and longer it's going to pay you dividend don't shortchange yourself my subscription is practically minimal it's practically nothing for the value that you get. Good luck, study hard, and most importantly, stay safe.